Today, we will talk a short story about Homo erectus, the upright man, where he was found and what is his role in our world. It is an extinct species of human from the Pleistocene, with its earliest occurrence about two million years ago. Its specimens are among the first recognizable members of the genus Homo. Several human species, such as Homo heidelbergensis and Homo antecessor, appear to have evolved from Homo erectus. Neanderthals, Denisovans, and modern humans are in turn generally considered to have evolved from Homo heidelbergensis. which places Homo erectus in the position of our direct ancestor. Homo erectus was the first human ancestor to spread throughout Eurasia, with a continental range extending from the Iberian Peninsula to Java. Java man, Homo erectus erectus, formerly also Anthropophagus erectus, Pithecanthropus erectus, is an early human fossil discovered in 1891 and 1892 on the island of Java, estimated to be between 700,000 and 1,490,000 years old. It was, at the time of its discovery, the oldest hominid fossil ever found. Today, we will talk about one such discovery, and that is Turkana boy. The year is 1984. Kamoya Kamu is searching the area on the right bank of the Neri Okotom River, a place about five kilometers away from Lake Turkana in northern Kenya. Kamoya Kamu has a reputation as one of the most skilled hunters for fossil remains. Kamu started working for paleontologists and archaeologists. Mary and Louis Leakey, a couple who are credited with the discoveries that moved human history several million years into the past. He worked as an excavation worker, but he learned quickly. In 1964, Richard Leakey, the son of Mary and Louis Leakey, joined the research team and began excavating at Lake Turkana. Kamoya Kamu became Richard Leakey's right-hand man when he was on a trip or giving lectures. Kamu supervised the excavations. Richard Leakey, in his book Origins Reconsidered, described Kamoya's Kamu abilities like this. His skills in finding hominid fossil remains became legendary. A fossil hunter must have a sharp eye and a keen imagination as a prospector, a mental pattern that dutifully evaluates everything it sees in its search for telltale clues. A kind of mental radar works for him, even when he is not very focused. Kamoji is an expert on hominid fossil remains, and there is no better finder of our ancestors' remains. But even with a good internal radar, the search is much more difficult than it seems. Not only are the fossils often the same color, as the rocks they were found among, they are usually broken into fragments of unequal shapes. In 1984, that hunter for hominid fossil remains will find his greatest find at Lake Turkana. In August 1984, Kamoya Kamu led a team of geologists and plantologists. They chose the area near the Narioko Tomo River as the site of the search. The team inspected the field for two weeks and found nothing. On the following day, the camp was supposed to be cleaned up and the team was supposed to move on. While most of the teams were resting or doing their jobs, Kamoya Kamu was searching the field. He chose an extreme unattractive place, a gentle rise protected by acacias. The surface was strewn with pebbles of black lava. If there were any fossil remains at that site, the high probability was that they were destroyed by a herd of goats, which ate the acacia. Then, Kamoya Kaim saw a piece of black bone as big as a matchbox. The piece of bone is barely distinguishable from the surrounding stones, 
but Kimoya recognized it as a piece of a hominid forehead. Kimoya immediately informed Richard Leakey, who was not in the camp. Leakey and paleoanthropologist Alan Walker arrived at the excavation site in a small plain. What they found is described by Richard Leakey in the book Origins Reconsidered. We ran to where Kamoya was sitting. In front of him lay his treasure, like jewels plucked from the dry earth. The right temple, the left and right parietal bone and pieces of the frontal bone of a beautifully preserved, but broken Homo erectus. That's how Ellen described the find in her field journal. Like everyone else, I was excited. Great excitement, jokes and laughter prevailed. There, in front of our eyes, parts of the frontal bone and the bone in the eye socket grew into the brain of the human ancestor, Homo erectus, the upright man. For the next four years, Leakey, Kamoya and the rest of the team carefully searched the site, sifted through the stones and put together a puzzle from the remains. In the end, they not only succeeded in completing the skull of the hominid, but also almost the entire skeleton. The assembled skeleton belonged to a man. Leakey and the team estimated that the man was between 11 and 12 years old. The skeleton is known by the catalog number by which it is known in the Kenyan National Museum. K, N and M, dash W, T, 15,000. But the team that found him named him Boy from Mercana. This is one of the most valuable finds. A complete skeleton is rarely found. The Boy from Mercana is the oldest and most complete finding of Homo erectus. But who was Richard Leake, the man who made this all happen? Richard Leake was born on December 19, 1944, in Nairobi, the capital of Kenya. His parents were the famous anthropologists and archaeologists Lewis and Mary Leake. But Richard did not intend to follow his parents in choosing a profession. He wanted to be a guide on safaris. It was very lucrative and glamorous business. But in 1963, Richard Leake found an Australopithecus jaw on one of his safaris near Lake Natron in northeastern Tanzania. After that, he decided to devote himself to his parents' profession. He traveled to London, enrolled in studies, but due to lack of money and impatience, he never finished college. In 1967, he joined an expedition in the Omu Valley in Ethiopia. On the way to the research site, he noticed Lake Durkana for the first time. Richard Leake and his team will find some of the most important finds on that lake. Among them, the boy from Urkana stands out. In the book Origins Reconsidered, Leake imagined the boy's last days like this. They left early, this party of six individuals with a clear objective, grabbing large strides across the rolling grassy terrain, punctuated here and there by flat-topped acacia trees, a herd of antelopes, shiny brown hair and horns bent like a corkscrew, were their target today. Tracks of the herd were seen yesterday and, if the estimates are correct, the herd should be approximately 25 kilometers to the north. A small piece of path for these hunters, whose strong athletically built bodies are capable of covering long distances with ease. Brothers and cousins were there, all of them, including the youngest boy. Despite his age, he was also tall, lean and muscular. His broad face, with its low, 
sloping forehead and accentuated arcades, looked like the faces of his relatives. It was his first hunting expedition, and his last. The hunters were choosing suitable prey. There were also herds of elephants nearby, but it was too dangerous a prey. The pile of meat wasn't worth the risk. The hunters chose antelopes. Leaky hypothesizes that, on their way, these hunters encountered another group of bipedal great primates. Like hunters, they walked upright, but their jaws were accentuated. They were not hunters, they gathered food, mainly herbs and fruits. Leaky hypothesizes that these herbivores were out of the way of hunters. These were unarmed and it can be assumed that they could once have been prey for hunters. Leaky writes further. The lack of natural weapons. These hunters compensated with their ability to lie low and cunning. To the arsenal of long and short spears, stones, hunters added simple but effective traps and the knowledge of how to lure animals into them. When the herd came into view through the acacia plants that hid the hunters, a strategy would be developed. One young animal was chosen as prey and the group of hunters would split up. Each hunter knew what to do to separate the herd and lure the separated animal into a trap. The trap consisted of leather cords made of tree bark and branches. Leaky guesses the hunt went wrong, at least for the boy. He somehow received a cut on his leg, started running in a panic. When he came to himself, he already separated from his group. Night was falling, the wound was bleeding. He decided to go to the lake, where his group might find him. The boy had reached the edge of the lake. Shallow lagoons overgrown with lush grass all round and the reeds that grew round the lake. Crawling, he dragged his exhausted body to the lake. The fever slowly claimed its victim. He felt better for a while calmer, sleepier, very, very sleepy. They never found it in that shallow lagoon. On the western shore of Lake Turkana, a little over half a million years ago. The skeleton of the boy from Arcana is estimated to be around 1,560,000 years old. The boy was about 1 meter and 60 to centimeters tall. If he had lived, he could have grown to 1 meter and 80 centimeters. In appearance, he was similar to the people who live near Lake Turkana today. He differed only in his head. The brain of the boy from Urkana was developed, but it had a volume of only about 880 cubic centimeters. The boy from Urkana belonged to the species Homo erectus. This is how Richard Leake describes the species. Homo erectus is a focal point in the evolutionary history of mankind. In a very real way, he is the forerunner of humanity. All the earlier ancestors of Homo erectus were more ape-like, except for the short-lived and somewhat enigmatic Homo habilis, while all after Homo erectus were strikingly human-like, in behavior and in appearance. The beginning of the hunting and gathering lifestyle came with Homo erectus. Stone tools looked standardized for the first time. A template of thought was imposed. Fire began to be used. For the first time, hominids spread beyond the borders of the African continent. Homo erectus was the hunter, his body, way of moving and thinking, his weapons and tools, were superior to Australopithecinus and Homo habilis. But Homo erectus was not human. Homo sapiens will need about 1 million and 200,000 years to pass from the boy from Urkana 
but Homo erectus had standardized stone tools and weapons, the first recognizable objects modified by hominids, with breaking or hitting shaped pieces of stone are about 2.5 million years old. They were found in the Awash Valley in Ethiopia. This is the beginning of the use of stone by hominids. Homo erectus took a step further. They could not survive without stone tools. The use of stone was the basis of technology for millions of years, until ancient miners and metallurgists began mining and processing copper around 5000 BC. Homo erectus or the upright man mastered fire. The fire protected him from predators, it scared the animals. It warmed him during the cold weather and, most importantly, enabled thermal processing of meat. The short teeth of Homo erectus could hardly chew a raw meat. The Australopithecinus and Homo habilis hunted animals. Or more often, they looked for the remains left behind by a powerful predator. Homo erectus was a hunter. He worked in teams and could hunt larger animals. Mastery of fire and hunting techniques allowed Homo erectus to spread out of Africa. About a million years ago, Homo erectus came to the Caucasus, North China and the island of Java. Stone weapons and tools of Homo erectus were special. Daniel Hedrick writes in the book Technology World History. We call their stone tools double-edged hand axes because they were carefully broken on both sides to produce a fairly straight and long-lasting chopping blade. Hand axes and butcher knives could weigh up to 2.5 kilograms. They were multi-purpose tools, which were used for skinning and cutting the meat of hunted animals, skinning and cutting wood. The creation of such stone tools and implements also meant the search for quality stone. The beginnings of ancient mining had traces in the search for stone-like flint or quartzite. These stones were sought after because of their hardness, or because they could be broken into flakes that could be sharpened. But we will talk more about these ancient miners another time.